My teacher calls my language slang. Who will speak for me? Who will speak for me? There's nobody tells her that she's wrong. Who will speak for me? Who will speak for me? House. Not house. Not peace. It's sandwich. Who will speak for me? Who will speak for me? Your so-called Scots is not a language. Who will speak for me? Who will speak for me? We my Scots pals, it's just the same. Who speaks for us? Who speaks for us? We're made to feel a sense of shame. Who speaks for us? Who speaks for us? My mother says, do what you're tell. Who speaks for us? Who speaks for us? Hello, I'm Mary Blance. And here in Shetland, I am convener of a Shetland Dialect Promotion Group that we have called Shetland Forwards. Our aim is to make sure that the Shetland dialect survives as a living tongue, so we do lots of things to promote it. That is one of the things I do, and it's one reason how I came a number of years ago to meet the writer Matthew Fitt, and I'm very pleased to welcome him here. You have a soft spot for Shetland, don't you, Matthew? Aye, I do, I do, because this is a place where language, local language, the non-English language in the community is respected. And it's a place where it's, um, Shetland is accepted here and um, the Burns use it in the scales and it's, I hear it every time I come here. I can never, you can never escape from Shetland when you're on the islands. And the, the tradition is that rich, that it, it leads into uh, all sorts of, uh, it's, it's not just about poetry, it's not just about create, creative writing, you see it in shop names, you see it in street names. So it's a part of the community, it's not a, it's not a rarefied thing that's, that's been forced on folk or it's been artificially recreated, it's there, it's always been there and it always will be there I think. This is part of wordplay but what's different for you at the book festival is that you have been working in schools. Because that's, that's where the next generation of writers is going to come from. And of course I've been interested in hearing about Shetland for the Bairns and getting them my, my, my version of Scots for Dundee. But the, the Bairns have had a great experience hearing for the likes of Lem Sissy and Ian Stephen and voices for different parts of Scotland, different parts of the UK. And so it's a great experience for the Bairns to hear so many different voices. And so wordplay, like, like, it, like um, I can't it would be, has, has been a muckle success. What are you writing at the moment? I'm, I'm on my second novel. I finally got a chance after many, many years. I took a long sabbatical to do books for Bairns. <laughs> um, and um, I am, I'm, I feel, I, I've kind of I've got a bit, this is the first time I've had a deadline for a novel, and it's not for a publisher. It's, the, 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 the timetable's been set by politicians. <laughs> and and, and of, maybe it'll change as, as things get closer to the referendum, but I'm, I'm determined to have a book out for the referendum next year, which is my personal take on on this. It's a science fiction novel, uh, so it's set in the future after a referendum on Scottish independence. Button Ben a Gogo was the first science fiction novel in Scots. No, it is actually quite hard to read Scots, isn't it? Aye, the Button Ben a Gogo, first science fiction novel in Scots, and, and without blowing my trumpet, the, the first commercially successful novel in Scots, because it did really well when it came out. Um, Button Ben, the, the publisher made me put a foreword in explaining how to read the book. Now, I didn't want to do that, but that was a trade-off against having a glossary at the back. So I was a first-time novelist, so I couldn't argue too much with the publisher, but I held, I stuck to my guns and there's no glossary at the back, because I feel that's like stabilizers. I feel like it's an apology for, for, um, for, for, for it not being in English. Um, however, uh, having put a forward in, I got criticised by a lot of folks of saying, why did you know be brave and just put it just as, as, as was, you know? Um, and it's science fiction tale, you know, it's not just, it's not a straightforward tale and so there's a, there's a lot of sort of pseudo technologies to get folk to get their heads around and everything and a lot of neologisms which, which are, are required for, which are required for, um, for, for science fiction. But um, the idea was to challenge the idea that Scots is for urban tales of urban deprivation or Granny's Heel and Hem. Well, we're spoken about the novel, but is there still writing for Bairns? I wasn't going to do anything, but I got the chance to translate um, a, a, for a series of books that I've loved since I was a Bairn. And there is a new Asterix book coming out in French in October 2013. And it's Asterix Chez Picked. Asterix and depicts 
And so it's the first Asterix uh, adventure in Scotland. Asterix and Obelix come to Scotland. Uh, a, a Pict is washed up in a big block of ice on the shore of Gaul, the shores of Gaul. And once they defrost him, they find out that um, he's been um, deposed from his rightful, um, rightful position in, in a clan and the love of his life has been tamed for him. So Asterix and Obelix travel to Scotland and um, the name of it in Scots is Asterix and the Pecht. And uh, it's been a real, a real labour of love. Uh, and we're doing this through Dallin Publishing, which is based in Cardiff. They have the licence for other minority languages of the UK. So there's going to be a version, of course, in Gaelic, uh, also in Welsh, and um, and for the very first time, there, there, there's to be a translation of an Asterix book into Scots. Is Button Bain a go-go still available? Ah, yeah, it's very much in print, yeah. It went through three or four reprints and still available. Um, and um, I think I think maybe in the next few while, it might, it might go into the e-book format um, it isn't in that yet, because mere folk now are reading on the Kindles, and um, um, so maybe it'll be the first Scots text <laughs> on the Kindle. Uh, maybe that'll happen in the next few in the near future. And I believe there's got a poem that they might like to share with us. I'd like to, yeah. I'd like to do that, yeah. This is a poem for a young lad in Dumfries who was told he couldn't, couldn't use his own language by by his teachers. They refused to recognise it, and I feel this discrimination, which happens. Our Scotland, no in Shetland I didn't think any mayor, but it certainly happened in the past, is, is something that we hate to address in Scotland. And I think that the Scottish Government, who hate a ambition for our, country, our culture, for our country, have to start to do something a lot more than they're doing, because at the moment, um, the commitment is for Gaelic and it's not for Scots. It has to change if we are to go forward and be a, a real nation, as we all hope that, or as many of us hope will happen. My teacher calls my language slang, wall speak for me, wall speak for me. There's nobody tells her that she's wrong, wall speak for me, wall speak for me. House, not house, not peace, it's sandwich. Wall speak for me, wall speak for me. Your so-called Scots is not a language, wall speak for me, wall speak for me. We my Scots pals, it's just the same. Who speaks for us? Who speaks for us? We're made to feel a sense of shame. Who speaks for us? Who speaks for us? My mother says, "Do what you're told." Who speaks for us? Who speaks for us? My father says he got the belt. Who speaks for us? Who speaks for us? My cousins gone to Gaelic schools. Who speaks for the Wains? Who speak? Who speak for them? For their language, there are different rules. Who speaks for the Wains? Who speak for them? We are no allowed to speak or read. Who speaks for the Wains? Who speak for them? It's like they all wish Scots was dead. Who speaks for the Wains? Who all speak for them? Well, Matthew, thank you very much. And I hope your son will turn out to be trilingual. <laughs>